So, um, we'll, we'll start on. I think, on maybe, <laughs> maybe I'm leading the witness here. No, no, well, I mean, so, so I, starting on, on the cost of the system. So, um, I think a lot of what we've, we've been hearing is diversity of resources. And so, um, if you build your system on, let's say, just solar, well, now you're going to have to platinum um, sort of plate your system where you have to overbuild solar because you're, you have to create, you're going to create more electricity. You're going to have to then create much more storage in order to store that electricity. And then you have to move it. So you have to over create um, and, and build a transmission. And so doing things both distributed, um, also with the sort of the, the, the moving to renewables where you have now resources further and further away from loads. Um, but then um, again, coupling that with uh, distributed energy um, makes sense. Uh, I'll say um, storage of molecules also makes a lot of sense. So uh, the more storage you have in molecules, when you have high price volatility um, throughout a region, um, then you can avoid having to purchase um, you know, those molecules at those times. And so having um, uh, more storage for that uh, makes a lot of sense. Um, uh, what about affordability? Is, so, it, is it going to be more expensive or less expensive to have molecules and electrons? So, <laughs> so energy is, all energy I think is gonna, um, is gonna increase. Um, I think having a, a diverse set of, of options and opportunities is the way to dampen that yeah. uh, increase. And so I think that's the most important thing. Mm. Um, again, if you just go to 100% uh, electricity for everything, you will have to um, platinum plate and gold plate. But if you have things where you can transmit those electrons into things uh, like um, renewable uh, synthetic gas, hydrogen, green hydrogen, um, utilize um, uh, waste products. So uh, we have a lot of uh, waste products all throughout, let's say the Central Valley, we have dairies, we have um, ag agricultural residues. We have um, a lot of, we still have a lot of dead trees utilizing. And we have landfills, we have we landfills. Have all kinds of things. We have waste streams we must manage into the future. Exactly. Right. Uh, let, let me just say though, um, it is super important for us to electrify. What, what are the reasons for that? We must increasingly adopt wind and solar. Those have to be our primary energy resources, right? Wind and solar. And if we have wind and solar, what's the very best thing we should do with it? No, not store it. Use it. <laughs> Use it immediately. Use it immediately. So we want increasingly for people to actually adopt electric vehicles, charge them when the sun's shining and the wind's blowing, for example. Okay, that's the very best thing we can do with it, okay? And if we do that in buildings, we have these heat pumps. You guys have heard of heat pumps before, right? Okay, why are they great? Okay, they can deliver three to five units of heat for one unit of electricity. It seems almost miraculous, but I can tell you about the thermodynamics of that. It's really cool. Okay, but anyways, this is super important, right? We can make it more efficient, and if we can use it directly, we gotta do that. But there always are the doldrums. Who said doldrums? I think it was you. Okay, maybe. There always are these periods where we do need to store it. Okay, we do need to store it. And sometimes when you store it for long periods of time, that's when you start to have things like molecules might be less expensive than storing it in uh, batteries, for example. Okay, so these kinds of things. We need all of these, and we need more of these than we are currently investing in if we're ever gonna make it to zero emissions. Okay. Um, other set, what, yeah, Rosalie, please. So a few more things on affordability. Um, as we electrify more, yes, there will still be you know, use for other low carbon uh, intensive uses, like I mentioned, but the more we electrify, the actually we're going to see the customer bills go down from a whole energy perspective. So the less gasoline we're using in our cars, because now we're using our electric cars, the more efficient our uh, our cars are, but also like Building. our buildings are, the more efficient we have and the more electricity we're using, we see the whole energy burden actually reduce. So that's important to keep in mind. The other thing about affordability and want to always keep front and center is affordability for who? Affordability for all is extremely important, so we have to think about equity. We have to think about our vulnerable communities. We have to think about our vulnerable customers. We have to really make sure that they are um, front and center. We think about this transition. 
because affordability, um, just from a whole perspective, um, it, it looks different for everybody. Um, so we have to think about that and, and uh, proactively, intentionally. Yeah, very nice, very nice. You have another point. I, yeah, I do, I have a couple other things. So the other thing about affordability, it goes back to load uh, management. And so it's not just build more, it's um, actually um, customer, all of our consumer behaviors. And so it's when we charge, it's the more efficient appliances that we have. So energy efficiency, it's looking at demand response programs that we can all participate in. So some of this um, affordability relates to also consumer behavior. So I just wanted to make that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Professor Lee was talking about that too, too, right? How do we work together? I'm, I don't need my vehicle tomorrow, so I don't need to charge and I'm gonna help my neighbor. Right, right. I, I want to say a couple things on reliability. Please. So that's also a part of it, right, um, is low demand and, and, and how we manage the load. But as it relates to reliability, there's a lot there. Um, so let's start with how we plan. Uh, we've actually made significant improvements when I say we as a state. So uh, the Energy Commission, our California Public Utilities Commission, when we think about the energy needs for the state, it used to be where are we seeing actual projects in this plan for that. Now they're looking at policy, what will drive and what will um, bring projects in. So it's much more forward looking uh, planning and that uh, we're able to follow that model as well. And so that is incorporated in our 10 year plan. So doing much more realistic uh, planning is an important component of that. Another thing that Edison is doing is we're working with large fleet owners, working with the port, large uh, energy users to understand what they're going to be doing. So rather than waiting for them to come to us, we're trying to get ahead of it. And what do those electrification um, needs look like? We're also trying to anticipate where there's going to be demand. So in high transportation corridors, there's going to be you know, high demand there as it relates to a charging infrastructure. And so trying to anticipate and, and get ahead of those needs um, is, is critically important. Uh, the other part of that is, okay, now that we're, we need to do a significant uh, infrastructure investment, you mentioned the energy needs of two to three cars, Professor Lee, that is real. There's gonna be significant increase in electrical demand, which means significant investment in our grid. So how do we uh, build all of that in time? Talked about trying to get ahead of things, but also some of our bigger projects require uh, uh, permits, right? Require, um, so both local and sometimes state permitting. And so what we're trying to do is also work with other stakeholders to try to streamline that permitting. Uh, some of you may have heard of the California Environmental Quality Act. Uh, whenever we're doing any type of CEQA review, that usually extends you know, those reviews. They're needed, but there's a lot of efficiencies to be gained. Uh, there's an assembly bill out there right now, Assembly Bill 914, correct me, Josh? Yes, 914, that is out there that is looking to streamline sequel reviews and state uh, reviews. And so that will help shorten the time um, for us to build our infrastructure. And so uh, we're supporting that bill and you know, hope others will as well, because like I said, grid infrastructure, um, not just investing in it, but actually being able to build it in time is gonna be an important component of that reliability. Thank you very much. Uh, at this time, the electric grid depends a lot on natural gas-fired power plants.